Joining me this morning on the phone is Larry Blackman, the founder of Cameo. He, of course, is the name that's synonymous with the group. Larry, thanks for joining us. Uh, you're coming to Macon soon. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But uh, let's 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 back up a little bit. Um, how long has Cameo been on the scene, and how has the oh group changed God. over the years? Man, Cameo has been a constant uh, progression of some of the most talented and uh, and interesting people. Uh, you know, through the years, um, goodness, how long has it been? Uh, I can say at least 40. <laughs> yeah. At yeah. least 40. Yes. And, uh, and before it was cameo it was the New York city players. Right. Right. Now was it, was, was the group always like 14, 15 members? Was it back then or, or now or what? No, no, no. It, you know, it has, uh, morphed into more and then less, uh, people, but, um, Back in the early 80s, okay, let's say about 82, uh, I was noticing that it was harder for our fans to know uh, everyone that was in the act. And then we, we had horns, and then the one time we did have horns, and then there was the, uh, the act that you would see on the cover, and then the rest of the guys on the back. And, and uh, I, I knew it would be better for marketing to have to focus on fewer people than more people on the cover. So I said, you know what, I'm going to put some of the, uh, the main guys on the front. And there were a lot of main people, but then, so that was hard. I didn't want that to suggest that others meant less. Right. Okay, because we were, you know, we were a large organization. Okay, but I knew it was better for marketing and notice. And then I noticed everyone else started doing that. And then there, there, there was the Gap Band. There was, uh, uh, you know, and a couple of other acts that started to do the, the same thing. I thought it was a smart move for getting notice for the band. And uh, and even though you might see three people on the front, when you get, get to when you got to see those acts, they were more than just the three people you saw. So it was more important to us to to build the brand than it was to you know, put everyone, because to us, even our sound man was uh, as much with the group than, uh, you know, than anyone else, sure. you know, and, and he happened to be our engineer at the time, too. So there were, you know, a lot of decisions to be made for uh, for the sake of, you know, progression. And times were, were changing, you know, people were doing different things. And, and we wanted our act to certainly... Uh, be known as the brand so regardless of who you saw who you heard and and i and i you know starting the act of course you saw me a great deal and and the, you know and i happened to do a bunch of different things so you know from paying, playing the drums to being up front when we made personnel changes you know so we didn't care about the rules you know <laughs> i understand that didn't you guys take a break for a few years well there were things going on uh, we were in the process of changing labels and and changing uh, you know the services that that you know provided things for us uh, from publicity to to other other things and and then social media became a very large part of the industry and uh, and and we were certainly involved there. We wanted to give our fans a place to know what was cameo country and what was it okay and uh, you know that's that's the way it is. It's CameoNation.com, baby. <laughs> I understand. Now, I, I got to ask you about the famous red cod piece uh, for people who may be confused. I'm talking about the pouch. Do you still wear it? Uh, occasionally. <laughs> occasionally. Because uh, when we first started, our outfits all had that cod piece on, on the front. But it wasn't as what you see now. And then when we did the Cameo video... Um, you know, we, we were handed out outfits, and I opened the box and was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought I'd pass it on to the public. Okay, well, and it, it and again, it has become uh, a, a symbol of uh, of you and the group for sure. Um, yeah, but yeah, go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, what? Well, no, I was going to say. <laughs> Please don't get attached to it if you think you see it forever. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, sometimes you're in the mood and other times you're not. Yeah. And, and you know what it is? It's, it's that, that reach for freedom that, 
that that it's hard to give up. Okay, I understand. And uh, and and although we're known for that, again, uh, things change, and sometimes you feel like it, and sometimes you don't. Uh, they they are certainly not listening to our music because of that cup. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. Your sound is unique, though. Um, how would you describe it? You mentioned the horns a few moments ago. You know what it is? It's an eclectic approach to the music we love and when, when, when we do it. And we refuse to be put into a, a box, per se. Um, but it's not being done to rebel for that. It's just the music we grew up with and what we love. And, and the stuff we create that we are composers of, are, you know, that's as interesting as someone might submit something to us, like a hanging downtown. And then we loved it. You know what I mean? So, so, um, man, it's when you're a musician, the last thing you ever want to think is that this is what you have to do for the rest of your life. Right, right, right. You know, and, and if you listen to all of the cameo albums, you will hear that progression most definitely. Well, now you've got, certainly had a, a ton of hits over the years. Uh, would you say Word Up is, is your biggest song or, or do you have a favorite of yours? Goodness gracious! I, I wish I could pick one, but that's like picking a favorite child. I know. You know I, know. I, mean? I, I knew when I asked that you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but there are some that, and and we appreciate what our audience appreciates. And Word Up is certainly has has been one of the biggest, as well as um, Candy and some others. And I was doing and um, you know analyzing what was happening on YouTube, and I was just blown away to find that Candy had 44 million hits. Wow. And Word Up had 62 million. So it's been running neck and neck, you know, uh, between those. But I enjoy that so much because this is what we wanted from the very beginning. We wanted to be a part of, uh, you know, our culture. Uh, we, you know, we wanted to be a part of what was happening at that time. What can people expect on April 30th when you come to Macon? Man, you can expect Cameo. Um, for sure, um, and all of the music that we've ever done. Um, in a cameo show, we try to duplicate the excitement that we have with that particular song uh, live, and, and, and we've had fun doing that, okay? Uh, most certainly. I don't think you could ever come to a cameo show and not get that. Any, uh, any new music from you guys in the near future? We're in the process of doing our new music now, and um, I would think... I would think by the and and it's different these days. You don't have to do an album. You just have to stay relevant, right? You know, at, at radio, and so that gives us a much wider canvas to work with because you know we don't have to do it all at one time and everything that we're playing around with then. Um, and we like we really like the uh, spontaneity of creation. We'd be recording one song, and and uh, and we'd be. Uh, composing another, and then <laughs> maybe before that song is done, we move to the one we were composing. So now, so, well, let me ask you one last question. Now, who who is Larry Blackman listening to these days? I mean, there's a there's so much stuff out there. Things have changed certainly over the last forty years. So who who are you listening to now? You know, Mike. Let me be very honest about that. I listen to the music that I love. Okay, past. Now, I can't think of too many things present because it's, it's, it's become a little different. Um, and then go, going back to us being ourselves, we enjoy what, what we do. And, 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 and we are constantly in a state of flux, okay? We're constantly in a state of creativity. So uh, we really look forward to that that excites us at that moment, that minute. And sometimes that changes, so as I said before, whereas you would have to do albums, you do 15 songs and, and you know, and all of different genres, so on and so forth. But uh, I'm really turned on by international music, okay? Uh, whereas um, maybe 10 years ago or even longer than that, there'd be something you'd hear and you go, oh, wow, I love that, you know? And, and then, of course, you'll get addicted to it. But, you know, I'm into... Oh, I mean, musicians and their creativity. And, man, we were lucky enough to work with some of our idols, the Brecker brothers, you know. Uh, right. Miles Ma Davis. Uh, um, goodness gracious. A lot of different people, even the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know. 
Uh, you know, I did some songs with them when they were changing from, I believe, RCA to another label. Okay. And I, please don't get... Don't, if I'm wrong about the details, forgive me. That's okay. That's I'm okay. allowed that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, well, yeah, that, that's what we listen to. I, I listen to a lot of Steely Dan, you know? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean absolutely, yeah. That's, that's music that just doesn't, like, you know, go out the window and somebody say, well, what else are you going to throw on? <laughs> I'm not throwing <laughs> anything else on that day. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Well, Larry, I don't want to hold you up too much longer. I want to thank you for joining us on Magic 100 this morning. And we're looking forward to seeing you here in uh, Macon on April 30th. Mike, we're looking forward to it. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to speak to Cameo Nation. And uh, we appreciate it very much. We appreciate it very much.